Hi, I'm Roger Lynn, and I'm going to be telling you today about the five audio processing blocks of our Adrenaline Sync version 2 plugin for Mac and Windows. The five processing blocks are the filter, the distortion, the limiter, the volume and pan, and the delay. And in a further tutorial, I'll be talking about the modulation sources at the bottom, the low frequency oscillator and the sequencer and the modulation mixer. But for this one, I'll just be concentrating on these five processing blocks. So let's go through them one at a time. The first one is the filter. Oh, and by the way, I should say that I've selected preset 101, which is one of the empty presets. And in this case, all the settings will be initialized. I can do the same thing by pressing the init button, and that would change all the settings to their initialized settings. So you can hear the guitar coming through now. And let's turn the filter on. That was just bypassed audio, by the way, with no processing other than the adrenaline sync. So here's the filter being kicked in. Notice when I turn the filter frequency how the tone changes by varying the frequency of this low pass filter. If I change the resonance to a higher number, the movements of the filter frequency will be more pronounced. The knob up on top is a wet-dry control, and this allows me to change the balance between the filtered and unfiltered signals. Now you've been hearing that the low-pass filter, which is one of five filter types, that's like a uh, analog synthesizer filter. Then there's also the band-pass filter, which is more like a wah-wah pedal, particularly at high resonances. Then there's the, the high-pass filter, which is the thinner sound because it only passes frequencies above the filter frequency. Then there's the flanger, and you know what that sounds like if you're a guitar player. And then finally, the phaser. There's also a noise button up here, and this adds a random noise sound to the signal. This is really handy for drums and for self-generating sequences, but that's not going to be covered in this particular tutorial. Now let's turn the filter off, and let's move over to the distortion block. The distortion block creates a very tube-sounding distortion at gains up to 500 times, and it has a couple of very nice controls, the pre-high pass and the post-low pass. Let's turn it on and you can take a list of what it sounds like. First here's the bypass signal and I'll turn it on. Now the pre-high pass control is very nice for changing the tone of the distortion. This is a high pass uh, filter so that it blocks bass notes and makes the sound a little bit tighter. For example, if I, t if I take it up to around here then I play it, the bass is going to be a little bit thinner. But I can take it up much higher and make it even thinner than that. Let's take it back down now so it's a fuller sound. And let's play with the post low pass. Now this is very cool. It's kind of like a speaker cabinet simulator. If I set it to this setting, 2.4 kilohertz, it sounds a little bit like a 12 inch speaker. But I can take it down to a darker sound. Or higher to the sound of perhaps something like a 10 inch cabinet. So I'll sweep it now as I play so you can hear the difference.
And finally, I'm going to set the gain down to 1 and show you that it actually works very well as a clean guitar amp simulator. This gives me a sound of something like a Fender amp. Here's the bypass signal. I'm just going to leave that on for now because it works very nicely in front of the limiter. The limiter is its a compressor, but uh, they call it a limiter because it limits the volume to, uh, if anything comes in that's above a certain volume level, it limits it to that volume. And this is what a guitar sustainer does. And that's what the controls are set to right now. So let's take a listen to this now. And by the way, this limiter is very good when you get into some of the modulations of adrenaline sync where you have resonant filters popping all over the place. They can be very loud sometimes, louder than other notes, depending on what your input signal is. So the limiter keeps everything at a nice even level and raises the apparent volume and doesn't peg your meters. But it's like a guitar sustainer in that way. Let me turn it on and you'll take a listen. You'll hear what I mean. Here's the normal sound. And here's where it kicked in. The attack controls how quickly the volume is pulled down when a sharp attack comes in, like a guitar uh, uh, note strike and the release controls how long it takes before the volume returns to normal. And that goes up to 100 times gain. Let's turn that off. And now the volume and pan processing block. That's just basic, straight old volume and pan. The output control sets the volume, the output volume of that particular preset, so you can make your presets equal in volume. The pan just sets the pan position. And then the initial volume is another one that's not quite as self-explanatory. This has to do with when you're doing volume modulations. For example, if you use the LFO to modulate the volume so you'd get a tremolo effect, the initial volume would set the initial level before it's modulated. But for if you're not doing any volume modulations, just leave it set to 100 and then just use output for your output volume control. Now the final thing is the delay setting. So I'm going to set this up right now to do a ping pong eighth note tremolo and you can hear what that sounds like in sync to the beat. You can also set up to delays up to eight measures of stereo, which makes some very interesting effects, uh, looping type effects. Well, that's just about all of the, that is in fact, <laughs> all of the five processing blocks in Adrenaline Sync. And by the way, they're all stereo. And what I forget, failed to mention is you've got input level meters over here and output level meters over here. In the next tutorial, I'll talk about the modulation sources down below and the modulation mixer. Thank you.